What is happening, football fans? Welcome back into Studio A for another edition of Gridiron Glory. I'm Josh Huntsberger. It's now week six of the regular season, which means conference play is finally here. As each team gears up to face off against familiar opponents, one thing is for certain. They all know how important it is to get that first W in league play. So let's find out who was able to do it right now. With a 3-2 and two record, the Eastern Eagles have already grabbed the same amount of wins they had in the entire 2011 season. Not to mention, their only losses have come to Wahama and Sims Valley, who combined for one loss entering tonight. The Eagles are currently sitting at the 11th spot in the region, with hopes of improving tonight against Belpre. We now welcome our TVC Hawking reporter Avery Jennings, making his Gridiron Glory debut to the desk. Avery. Eastern has a lot of momentum coming into tonight. Oh yeah, well Josh, coming off a couple of big wins over Waterford and South Gallia, coach David Tennant thought things were really beginning to click for his Eagles team. And with TVC Hawking Giants Trimble and Fedhawk on deck, Eastern amped things up in practice a bit this week. But tonight was all about Belpre, homecoming night for the Golden Eagles, and Eastern came in looking to spoil the party. And on the first play from scrimmage, senior Joey Scouten does just that. The quarterback takes it up the middle, looking like Tim Tebow, breaking a couple tackles there. 73 yards on the draw, taking it to the house, and the ground attack was working for Eastern all night Not long. Not what Belpre was looking for to start. Oh no, yeah, on the first Belpre possession, now Tavian Miller looking for an answer. He rolls out and finds Tyler Barber, but Barber plays for Eastern and Josh turnovers will kill you, and Ethan Nottingham makes sure that the freshman learns his lesson on the next play. He scores from 28 yards out. Some nice style points there on the slide into the end zone. 14-0 Eagles. Pretty. Still first quarter now. Uh, Belpre trying to get the passing offense going. 22 yards over the mid middle, Miller to Nate Teeters. And on the next play, six yards on the screen out wide to Tyler Martin. But an intentional grounding penalty on the next play backs them up. Third and long, they can't convert. Easy does it for Scouting on the sideline, but hey, wouldn't you be easy if you had the help that he had tonight? Uh, now Belpre second teams. quarter, Belpre trying to punch, snap is high, Eastern recovers deep in Belpre territory, and Zach Scout makes him pay on the reverse, a little bit of trickery, and he scores on the ground. It's 28-0 Eastern at this point, and things go from bad to worse for the freshman. Miller is high, and that's going back for six. Max Conahan making Ooh. the play there. Uh, Eastern was really clicking on all cylinders tonight, and the quarterback, Tavian Miller, did not have his best game. Only 8 of 15 from the field, two interceptions, and it really cost his team tonight. All right, this Eastern Eagles team, Avery, with that huge win, they're looking pretty well-rounded so far. What do you think they did so well tonight? Well, Josh, they ran the ball. A 439 total rushing yards for this team tonight, and five different players scored for Eastern. They were really clicking on all cylinders. I know I've been saying that, but that's what Coach David Tennant told me about his team. They're really clicking, uh, heading into a big matchup with Tennant or with uh, Trimble next week. All right, yeah, that was my next question, buddy. Trimble at Eastern. Eastern gets the home game. Do you think they can pull out the upset and take out Trimble? Well, yeah, Josh, they certainly can. Uh, Eastern played physical, tough football tonight. Now, a couple blunders here and there, a couple mistakes, and a good team like Trimble will capitalize on that. But the way they're playing, they can keep up with anybody at this point. All right, big win for Eastern. Great job tonight, Avery. Now, after starting this season 2-1, Crooksville was faced with the toughest three-game stretch imaginable in the MVL. After losing a close matchup to Sheridan in Week 4, they were shut out by returning league champs Tri-Valley last week. Tonight, they hit the road to take on a 4-1 Maysville squad with hopes of returning to 500 and keeping playoff hopes alive. We now welcome our MVL reporter Brad Hawley live from Zanesville. Brad, how tough has this stretch been for Crooksville? Well, this stretch has been monstrous, Josh. To put it in perspective, their last three losses have come to teams that are 13-2 and two combined, and it won't get any easier tonight against the Maysville Panthers. The Panthers have shown maturity in the clutch, winning three of their four games by only a combined nine points. And it is homecoming tonight in Maysville. And congratulations to this young lady, a homecoming queen. And we started off mid-second quarter, Lake Channel over the middle to Nate Daniels, 25 yards down to the three-yard line. And this is Channel to Dalton Rollison, four-yard touchdown pass, 7 nothing ceramics. But then Maysville got it going. Here goes Eli Chambers, a pitch to the right side, 37 yards and a touchdown. It is 7-6 Crooksville. And then the defense steps up. Justin Wilson, interception, 32-yard scamper, pick six, 13-7 Maysville. And the defense just keeps coming against poor Lake Channel. Pick, or a sack, I'm sorry, by Jordan Hayes. And it's safe to say he got Gator swamped. And then Jacob Miller, after they forced the punt, goes deep over the middle, 20-7 Maysville at the half. 
and then Crooksville, last ditch effort, uh, Nate Daniels, 11 yard run, bulldozes his way, and then last play for them to try to get back into the game, it's channel intercepted by Eli Chambers again, and he had a huge night all night long, and Coach Clark sung his praises. Uh, Eli's a special player. He's uh, made a lot of plays for us this year, and uh, when he's got the ball in his hands, he's just dangerous, and he can take it the distance anytime, so he had a nice game. Yeah, Josh, and they had 305 total yards while Crooksville had 216. It was the big plays that won this game for Maysville. All right, well, I'd like to clear things up, folks. He's out in Maysville, not Zanesville, so he's right there where all the action happened tonight. Now, Brad, Maysville didn't start getting going until right at the end of the first half. How'd they turn things around? Well, they, they scored in all facets. They scored four touchdowns in five minutes in between the second and third quarter. They scored by rushing a touchdown, passing touchdowns, kick returns, and pick sixes. This is what scares opponents because they can score on you on every facet. All right, Brad, what, real quick before we let you go, Crooksville, tough loss for them tonight. How do they bounce back? How do they get things going again? Well, Crooksville is 0-4 against the four best teams in the MVL, so it's all downhill from here. They could still go 6-4 and four and have a winning record. All right, thanks a lot. Brad Holly, live in Maysville. Thanks, thanks a lot, buddy. Now that wraps up another win for Maysville, but it doesn't finish our MVL coverage. We'll be bringing you coverage live from Thornville and our Game of the Week, which features John Glenn at Sheridan. Both teams' strong rushing attacks made for a bruising battle tonight, so be sure to stay tuned until the end of our show. Now, after dropping weeks two and three, Gallia Academy seems to have found their stroke, winning their past two matchups by a combined 78 points. Tonight, they took on a 1-4 Chillicothe team who couldn't be happier for league play to arrive. And if the Cavaliers could pull out a win on the road, the SCOAL would be wide open. We now welcome our SCOAL reporter, Graham Fugazi, to the desk. Graham, we're looking at a brand new Golly Academy team. I mean, that's exactly right, Josh. I mean, this is probably one of the most explosive Galley Academy offenses we've seen in some time, averaging just under 52 points in their three victories. But a Money Memorial Field slowed play between the Blue Devils and Cavaliers in tonight's matchup, and this game was closer than some expected. And you know, Josh, what better way to get this game started and welcomed by the Galley Academy student section. They were pumped. Gotta just, love the G-Force. Absolutely. I mean, they were ready to go for this matchup. And we're going to start it right off in the second quarter here. First and 10 from the 10-yard line. Nick Clagg off the left tackle. He jumps the defender down to the Chillicothe two-yard line. And his partner in crime, Cody Russell, he's going to pound it in from one yard out. On third down, 7-0 Galley Academy. Russell had 42 yards. 14 carries, and that was one of his two touchdowns on the night, Josh. Solid and night. It was, absolutely. And after a Chillicothe and Galley Academy three and out, Ryan Mathis slings the ball over the middle and almost picked off by outside linebacker Mark Allen. He just needs a little more sticky on those gloves. Blue Devils go into halftime leading 7-0. That's Wade Jarrell there, Josh. That is a Gridiron Glory Player of the Year watch list. Cavs had the ball though to start the second half, and it was all Markel Kane. This right here for 12 yards. He actually pounded it in from 50 yards out on the next one for a touchdown 7-7 there. But Nick Clagg, he wanted to silence the Chillicothe fans with a 35-yard run down the right sideline, down to the Cavs' 23-yard line. And to cap off the uh, nine-play drive, Wade Jarrell's going to find Seth, uh, excuse me, Seth Austin, uh, for the connection, 11 yards for the touchdown. Galley Academy up 14 to seven, and Galley Academy would end up going on to win 20 to seven. Wow, another another strong win for Galley Academy. Not a huge offensive blowout like we've been seeing. So that that offense got slowed down a little bit, but they got the W. Grant. I mean, that's that's that was the mo obviously the most important thing in this matchup was getting that W. They have now one and zero in the conference. And Wade Gerald, he was a little bit contained in this matchup, only a little bit, only over 70 yards passing. And with this matchup, they really since the muddy field, it was more on the ground game. I mean, they gave the ball to Clag, they gave the ball to um, also Russell. And it, that was what the factor was. All right, now Chillicothe, on the other hand, tough. Dropped to one and five. What's the road looking like for them? Well, I mean, now going down the road, they're going to end up facing off against uh, Warren next week at home. But then their next two weeks, they go on the road. They play against a Logan team away. They also go on the road and play at Jackson. So those two matchups, they, I can see them getting a W against a Logan team. It's going to be a tough matchup, though. 
All right, thanks a lot, Graham. Galley Academy moving ahead with the win. Thanks, buddy. Now, if you'd like to keep up with Galley Academy or any of our other teams throughout the week, check us out on social media. You can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Gridiron Glory for score updates, pictures, and more. You can also follow my host Twitter account at GGHost underscore J-A-U-S-H. There you can get my weekly opinions on weekly matchups, ask any questions, and let me know who you think will win each game of the week. Since dropping below 500 for the first time in what seemed like forever, Williamstown has gotten back with, on track with two straight victories. But tonight, they faced their next true test when they hosted a well-rested 3-1 St. Mary's team. We are now joined by our West Virginia, West Virginia specialist, Ian McConville. Ian, Williamstown has been rolling lately. Josh, the Yellow Jackets were riding high coming into tonight's contest, having won their last two games by a combined score of 72-14. to But they faced a stiff test in St. Mary's tonight, a team who, according to Coach Terry Smith, shows many similarities to the Jackets. It was homecoming night for Williamstown tonight, and they were excited and ready. St. Mary's senior quarterback Andrew Cosper looks to pass, but he sees nothing downfield, so he decides to keep it for himself. And he's going to scramble to the left and avoid the pass rush for a gain of 25 yards. Now Williamstown head coach Terry Smith pulls his defense aside to refocus them and it definitely worked because the Jackets were forced to stop from there and the Williamstown offense would take control for the remainder of the first half here Williamstown. Running back Trace Hart takes this one up the middle for a gain of 11 yards and then the next time he touches the ball he's going to take it 42 yards up the sideline and he's going to end up coming right into your living room. A huge hit out of bounds brought him right in front of our camera. And the weather tonight was a little chilly and it can only be described as one thing. It's jacket weather. From hey, there, love Williamstown's the offense is still rolling, Josh. They move into scoring position, and Jake Tracewell moves away from the pass rush and finds David Hastings in the back of the end zone, capping an 11-play drive to put the Jackets up early in the second quarter, and they would continue to roll in that second quarter. Tracewell finds Gage Wicks across the middle from 20 yards out, and Williamstown goes up 14 to nothing. And this fan is ringing his victory bell loud and clear, but it wouldn't last long as Williamstown would fall 22 to 17 to St. Mary's and uh, an interesting fact tonight this is only coach Terry Smith's second loss in the Little Kanawha Conference since he's taken the reins 10 years ago and it's his first loss to St. Mary's in that time frame the only team that has beaten him is uh, Wark County so an interesting fact for tonight. Wow big well, that's a little bit surprising there Ian now looked like it was all Williamstown early how did St. Mary's turn stuff around? Well, it was just an absolute tale of two halves. Um, Williamstown wasn't able to get their run, great run game going in the second half, and th from there, their offense was just thrown off game plan, and St. Mary's made the plays when they needed to and capitalized and got the ball for points. All right, now next week, they got another tough challenge against Work County. Talk about that matchup. Well, that matchup's going to be incredibly difficult for, for Williamstown. They're going to have to really battle against a very good Work County team, and I'm unsure on whether or not they can get it done. All right, well, playoffs might be on the line if Williamstown can't get it done. Thanks a lot tonight, Ian. Now, it's now time on our show for extra points. You know the drill by now. Two games, one minute. Let's get rolling. We're going to start off with Parkersburg here versus Riverside Warriors. And early on, quarterback Aaron Roberts for Parkersburg. Going to roll out here to the right and find Dylan Thomas, the running back, for 16 yards, moving the chains, getting the first down. Now here, Adam Lindemoot running off tackle. Bounces the outside, now hops over a defender down to the five-yard line. And on the very next play, running back Chandler Hamilton runs it in. Parkersburg wins this one, 38-35. Now switching gears to Parkersburg South, they welcome Friendship Collegiate Academy. DeAndre Parker here with a touchdown pass to Camel Gardner. They go up 6-0. Now Jordan Kiocho for South is coming back. 22-yard touchdown run, extra point good. They go up 7-6. But Parker here again, going back to the passing game for the Knights. 47-yard hookup here leading to another first down and eventually this touchdown here Parker hooking up with Pote on an eight yard gain here they would win this one huge 60 to 10. Now well unfortunately for them Parkersburg South wasn't able to get the win tonight but after talking to the Patriot community we found that one dedicated fan finds a motivational boost just being at the game. We now welcome Seth Austin to the desk to elaborate. Seth to this Bolin family football is basically means everything. It does, Josh. And the Bull and football family aspect extends past Tyler and his dad being the quarterback and the coach tandem at Parkersburg South. Tyler and his uncle and uh, John have always been close, especially with sports. With John battling cancer, football has been the force behind strengthening their bond. All of the memories Parkersburg South quarterback Tyler Bullen makes this season will hold just a little more meaning. Inspired by his uncle, the senior has found his motivation. He's always positive about games and a lot, a lot of fans, you know, first time anything goes wrong, he's, a lot of people are being negative, but he's, 
He's there being positive. It's John Mace's optimistic demeanor that has helped him in his battle with colon cancer. Since his diagnosis in 2004, Mace's optimism has kept him pushing forward in his fight. We'll beat it. I got too much to live for. Way too much. One of those things is supporting Bolin and the Patriots every Friday night. It means a lot to come out here and watch him play and things he did throughout the years and stuff out there and he's he come a long way. He gives you a little drive. And at points you really need a lot of drive. So coming out and watching him perform and does do what he does, it's a big morale booster. And I'll do it until I, my legs won't let me do it or my body won't let me do it. I'll be I'll be out here. He really loves it, all of us. Like he's a big fan, like everyone on the team he knows and talks about. Uh, every player he brags on to everyone about he knows like, everyone's first name and everything. He goes on about uh, he, you can go up and see him on a Saturday and he'll tell you about how every single player did on every play. Mace's optimism is contagious and it spreads the bone as a form of inspiration in his senior season. You swung out there every game and uh, just do your best for him because he you know he's he, he, he wants you to do so much out there. He wants you to do so well, and, he, and it takes. He he fight, he's such a hard fighter, and he makes you want to fight hard. I got I got a, a family that supports me, 100 percent, and to me to give up, I'll be there until it's over. Josh, after meeting Mr. Mace and his family this week, it's really hard not to draw inspiration from him. Hey, I know I do, and I know we'll be pulling for him all the way through. Thanks a lot, Seth. And well, had we been at the Parkersburg South game, our choice for Fan of the Week would have been a no-brainer. However, we promised all you Athens fans that we were headed your way. And rest assured, folks, these fans know how to represent their Bulldogs. I mean, I, I barely had one foot out of the car, and you already told me you're going to be fan of the week. Why is that? Because that's the drop! You guys didn't know, but we are actually giving our fan of the week this Humvee right here. So, you know, there's going to be a really lucky Athens fan tonight driving home with this gas guzzler. Stay tuned. Um, my daughter is a sixth grade cheerleader. All right. I think we may have just run into her over there. I had some middle schoolers teaching me how to cheer. They gave me a run for my money. I, I looked like a child out there. The all black kind of fits my style a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, this is me. This is me right here. Lawbreakers. <laughs> I'm gonna go get me a keychain. All right, sweet. Yes. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Man, I'm rusty. There you go. Long time since high school sports. <laughs> Feels good. Go Army. Go Gridiron. Go me. I got a Humvee, bro. I'm on top of the world. Come on through. Come on through. Okay, come on through. Come on through. All right, we're good. Now go crazy again. Well, you know what? I'm having a tough, tough time deciding between you guys. I'm going to leave it up to the student section. Right here. Right here. Hey, valiant effort. But I'm sorry, I think we're going to have to. Yeah. Yeah. Can I have the shirt, Glenn? The guy needs a shirt, right? Oh, I got Fan of the week, go crazy. Hey, I had trouble making the decision on my own tonight, but I got to say, guys, I think the student section made the right choice. Now, we also sent a crew out to Basil Rudder Field to watch some football. The Bulldogs entered the night 4-1 and one behind the stellar arm of Joey Burrow. But tonight marked the start of conference play when they took on Wilson. And a win for the Golden Rockets would make them a legitimate contender in the TVC Ohio. We now welcome our TVC Ohio reporter, Pat Moore, to the desk. Pat, simply put, Athens has been incredible so far. Uh, well, I mean, if you ask someone who is the TVC Ohio favorite at this point of the season, your response is mostly going to be the Bulldogs. But, hey, the non-conference slate is over, so uh, really when you make or break when uh, in the conference play. Uh, the young and Joey Burrow, Gridiron Glory Player of the Year candidate, putting up disgusting numbers so far this season. First try of this game, Wilson's Kane Wolford. He's going to put the ball on the ground. Athens recovers it. Can't do that with the Athens offense. They'll make you play because four plays later, 
Burrow. He's going to hook up with Adam Luerman for 25 yards here on the left side and the score. PAT good. Athens up 7-0 early. And after Wellson three and out, Athens facing a fourth and five. And Burrow, same place. He's going to find Luerman again, this time for 42 yards. That's the second of his six touchdown tosses on the night. And now at the end of the first quarter here, Athens and Wilson Sorry again. Trey Williams getting in on the action. 20-yard touchdown run, evading a couple tacklers there. Into the painting grass. Two-point conversion good. Athens up 21-0. Now Wilson punting it right away before the end of the first. And Skylar Schwartzel, he's going to take the punt with a nifty return here. He's going to make a couple defenders miss. A couple guys he could have made it for six. Oh yeah, Josh, he could. He's got the moves out there. Sets up uh, Athens back in Wilson territory in the beginning of the second quarter. This is Burrow back to uh, Tyler McIntosh for three-yard touchdown. The PAT was good. Athens extends early 28 to nothing, just putting the foot on the gas. And a few possessions later, Wilson trying to get something going in Athens territory. Ooh. Jake Walter, he keeps it, but Dan, Dan Evans with a huge Ooh, hit wee. to prevent the first down. Just a rough night overall for the Golden Rockets. Athens wins 54 to eight. And a side note here, Josh, Jake Walter on the, the quarterback who uh, took that big hit, uh, he took a shot a little later to the shoulder. He was carted off the field in the second court. Uh, initial reports, though, are that he should be fine. So, you know, our, our good good luck to Walden with that injury. Yeah, hopefully he's getting better now. Let's kind of go back talk about the game a little bit. Athens, a lot of points on the board. Everybody's always talking about this offense, Pat. That defense has been clicking as well lately. Oh, yeah. I mean, the offense is there. But, boy, that defense was playing well tonight. Really buckling down, making the plays, and was just swarming to the football. This team is so dangerous now that they have a defense that can really play. Now, as far as this Wilson team goes, no easy task. Next week, they welcome Nelsonville York to town. And like you said, they lost Waldron tonight. Well, I mean, let's just hope Waldron can suit up for that game because they're going to need him. They're going to need him against that Buckeyes team who's right now looking at the, the second you know seat there in the TVC Ohio race. But uh, hopefully uh, Waldron will suit up and it's just not the way the Rockets wanted to start the TVC Ohio uh, season. All right. All right, Pat. Well, tough loss for Wilson. Another big win for Athens. Thanks a lot tonight. Now, while I told you we weren't done with MVL action yet, and I am no liar. Behind a strong defense and a powerful rushing attack, John Glenn has positioned themselves with a chance for an MVL title run. But tonight, they face their toughest test yet against a Sheridan squad who they haven't beaten since 2006. With league title and Im implications and plenty of history, we couldn't think of a better game for our game of the week. Welcome our MVL reporter Colin Brown, live from Thornville. He was at the game tonight. Colin, Sheridan, John Glenn, lot on the line tonight. What, what happened out there, buddy? Well, you know, Josh, you had talked about that defense for the John Glenn Muskies, and boy, did they need to step up tonight. Facing the best offense that they have seen all season in the Sheridan Generals, they were sure to be put to the test. Both coaches stressed the importance of stopping the opposing running backs and taking care of the football. It was, a, it was a beautiful night here in Thornville. Nice blue moon out. First possession for Sheridan. Blocked punt by Stone Morgan. He recovers on the goal line, takes it in for, for, John, for John Glenn, 7-0. Then John Glenn's first offensive possession, they fumble. RJ Waugh of Sheridan recovers, and Sheridan's got the ball at midfield. Connor Smith on a run to the right. The defense closes the hole, and Connor Smith was only held to, he was held to 47 yards, the drive stalls, and then uh, Sheridan's possession from the 24-yard uh, line, fourth and 14, Cipriano is sacked, and they turn the ball over. Their fans want to see some football. And then you got Blake Atkins, takes it in from the 19-yard line on the 10. He fumbles the ball, Sheridan's got the ball, However, they don't. Tanner Morton recovers the very next play for him from four yards. He scores 14-0 John Glenn. After a fumbled squib kick, John Glenn, 36 yards through the air. Zach Swingle to Grant Hall, 21-0 John Glenn. All in a matter of 15 seconds. There's 45 left in the half. Then in the second half, 
After a 42-yard run called back for Stone Morgan on holding, Blake Atkins takes it 76 yards up the sideline, tiptoes, 28-0 John Glenn. Coach was happy with his defense. To get a shutout, uh, you know, against a uh, Sheridan football team is, uh, is is pretty special. So you know, our defense, uh, you know, just really uh, from the you know first snap to the last, really, you know, did an exceptional job. I thought. Wow, Colin. So well, you know. Uh, hey. Oh yeah, Josh. Yeah, but it seems like I'm talking about it. You're talking about it. Even coach was talking about it. This John Glenn defense is the real deal. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know, they, they uh, held, they forced Sheridan to 10 punts on the night. The Generals just couldn't really get anything rolling. You know, a couple possessions here and there driving down the field, but it was always, you know, turning the ball over or, like I said, forced to punt. And then Sheridan was 3 of 15 passing. Couldn't really get anything going there. Only 81 yards of offense on the night. All right, now Sheridan, they've dropped two in a row. That's that's just something people don't say very often, Colin. They're in uncharted waters. Where do they go from here? Well, talking to you know some of the guys on the sideline and some of that Red Rage faithful, they can't even remember the last time that Sheridan was shut out in a football game, especially under Coach Paul Culver. So this is just new, new to the Generals there. Their stands were very quiet. You could just feel the energy lifted out of the stadium in the entire second half. All right, Colin, before we let you go real quick here, John Glenn's running back, Blake Atkins, the kid's a G. He does work all night. Talk about how he impacts this team. Oh, he's the real deal. I mean, they run that wing tee, a lot of running backs, but 124 yards, uh, a, a touchdown, as far as he can carry them, is as far as they'll go. All right, well, John Glenn doing their, they're doing their best to open up the MVL. Thanks a lot tonight, Colin. Now, to keep up with our coverage every day of the week, log on to our website at woub.org slash gridiron. There you can find game previews, videos, and score updates on all of our featured teams. You can also find standings, playoff seedings, and pretty soon, see which players have the chance to be named Gridiron Glory's Player of the Year. Well, that wraps up our new coverage, folks. But here at Gridiron, we believe that the most impressive moments deserve the most exclusive attention. Here are tonight's top plays. We're going to start out here with Athens here at number three. You're going to see Dan Evans come flying out of the screen with a huge hit. Big right there. Athens would go on to win 54 to 8. Now at number two, Williamstown quarterback here, Jake Tracewell, doing his best Mike Vick impression in the backfield, dodging one and then tossing it up in the back of the end zone. Jake Trace, er, and then David Hastings comes up with a nine yard touchdown, but they would lose 22 17. Now at number one here, the Eastern Eagles quarterback, Joey Scouten, on the first play from scrimmage, makes a guy miss, then beast modes two guys out of his way, kicks on the afterburners, and he's gone. They would roll in this one, 48 to 20, not looking back at all over, over Belper. Now unfortunately, we don't have any more highlights for you tonight, but before we let you go, take a look at where we're headed next week. All right, folks, well, next week we are going to be seeing Philo at Sheridan. Sorry, we're experiencing some te te technical difficulties, folks. But next week we're going to have Wahama at Federal Hawking. Huge matchup in the TVC Hawking. Could possibly decide the league. And then for our game of the week, folks, Parkersburg South at Parkersburg. All eyes in the state of West Virginia will be on that game. So be sure to tune in next week. We've got a lot of fun coming for you in conference play. Now, that is all the show we have for you from week six. But tonight, we learned that Athens and NY are tuning up for their Week 10 matchup and that the SEOIL may be seeing a new champion. So be sure to keep following our coverage next week and throughout the entire rest of the season. But until then, I'm Josh Huntsberger reminding you that there's nothing better than Friday nights and gridiron glory. <laughs>